What's going on everyone? Today is day seven of the $500,000 challenge. You know, it's a, a Sunday. I had a lot of time to kind of, you know, sit around and think today and thought, um, you know, this could be a great day to kind of walk everyone through how I got started in real estate investing. Uh, it's been a, a wild um, three years. The first year I was working a, you know, a full-time job and doing it on the side. And then the last two years have been, been full-time. But I'll start from the very beginning, and um, of course, if you have any questions, please reach out. But you know, I believe you know everyone's capable of doing exactly what I've done to even a greater extent. Um, this is just just my story. Uh, so I, I guess I'll start. You know, before the beginning, just you know, me personally, I'm always been very entrepreneurial. Um, I've always wanted to own my own business, even going back to high school. Um, I was that kid, you know, wholesaling printers out of his parents' garage, um, like trying to, you know, somehow buy a, a Lamborghini as a, a six-year-old, which I realize how, how dumb that sounds. Uh, but anyway, that's what I wanted. Uh, so I was always trying to come up with these ideas, like I was wholesaling printers out of my parents' garage. Whenever penny auctions were becoming a big thing, uh, my cousin and I started one. And I was 16. It actually blew up at the time. And I uh, got 3,000 members uh, across the United States in the first uh, like two or three weeks. Um, I was, you know, for a 16-year-old, I think I was making you know, a pretty good amount of money. And the site did really well for three months and then, you know, came crashing down the next three. As the kind of the bigger players in the space figured out what, I, what we were doing, which, you know, wasn't rocket science at all. I mean, penny auctions were brand new. People thought they were scams. And we were, of course, going in all these forums and blogging about how to use them properly and then, you know, linking to our site. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything uh, extraordinary. It was just we were kind of taking the runoff from people going to these big sites and then coming to ours uh, from us providing, you know, helpful, inf helpful information. Uh, but so, you know, that, that kind of got me hooked to this idea that, you know, I am, I am capable of this. I don't need a boss. I'm more than capable to go out and um, you know make it on my own. And I was I've been hooked ever since. But so that was the first thing. The printers were next. Uh, in high school, I also like tracked 25 bands over six months, trying to figure out like what actually builds a following. Um, that that one went absolutely nowhere. Uh, drop shipping products to bodybuilders. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else in high school. I tried to buy a Range Rover and part it out. Um, my parents shot that one down uh, pretty quickly, <laughs> but but nevertheless, like uh, I was, you know, trying a bunch of things. Um, I wasn't probably sticking with them as long as I should have, which is the reason why a lot of them didn't really go anywhere. But nevertheless, like it was always like had that um, drive in, inside me. Like I always wanted to go do something like that. And so I went, uh, graduated high school, went to college at OU, and while I was there, I started flipping couches, and well, I guess I say flipping, but you know, going out and buying couches. Um, I was looking for brown sectionals, actually, at the time, and you know, I'd be on Facebook Marketplace, and I'd find one that's, you know, out in Shawnee, or in Elk Mulgee, or, you know, a smaller town, and I was looking for, um, you know, a blurry picture, or something to indicate that, uh, you know, there was an older person selling this, selling this couch. I'd go out there, I'd buy it, I'd bring it back to Norman um, and sell it uh, usually for about double. You know, you could buy one for two, three hundred dollars and sell it for six or seven hundred. And, you know, doing two or three of those a week, uh, you're making pretty good money as a college student. The only problem is, you know, you're glued to your phone, and you got to head out there. But I'd probably say that was the, the second most successful thing I, I did up to that point. Uh, around my junior year, I've always had a love for cars, and I really wanted to go out and work for Auto Trader uh, or some car magazine and actually like review cars. Like I thought that would just be like the coolest thing in the world. And I I got a hold of Auto Trader, and of course I'm an entrepreneurship major, so a major for people who don't want a job. I'm also uh, I also double majored in MIS, uh, Management Information Systems, but that's I wasn't interested in that at all, that was just like a backup, like just so I actually had something on my resume towards like getting a traditional job. Uh, but anyway, so I contacted Auto Trader and uh, got them to, you know, got them to agree that, you know, if I 
did something to build this resume and it kind of landed on starting a YouTube channel and I got 10,000 subscribers that I would get at least an interview. Um, there was, you know, implying that I'd get a job, but you know, nothing was, uh, nothing was set in stone. So my senior year of, of college, I started this YouTube channel. Um, I didn't have an exotic car. I mean, I just had this, you know, little dinky Camaro. Um, but luckily my friend did, and we'd go uh, to all these like different car meets and we'd drive his car. Um, and you know, I would, I would film uh, and just bought a GoPro at the time, it was the first one eventually I like, kind of scaled up and bought some, some better cameras. But we kind of got plugged in with this, the Tulsa Exotic Supercar Group. And again, not because we deserve to be there by, by any means, um, but I, we were going around and filming these guys doing some really awesome stuff with their really expensive cars, and they just kind of starting started inviting us back. Uh, or at least that's how, you know, I, I think that's why. Uh, you know, I would, you know, put together a little video. I put it in the Facebook group that they're a part of. Um, of course, I'm putting it on YouTube and, uh, you know, trying to grow this following so I can go out and get this, uh, get this you know, car reviewing job. Uh, close to the end of my senior year, I realized that this wasn't, like I wasn't gonna get there. I was at like 2,500 subscribers. Um, I'm like trying to trying to figure this out and you know, realizing it's not, it's not gonna happen. Like there's not, there's not enough time left um, and I need to kind of like put my energy into something else, like into actually looking for a job that is a real job after I, I graduated in a few months. Um, so I decided to come back uh, to Tulsa to work for this HVAC company, um, and you know, like no joke, my my third day there, you know, I'm sitting in the cubicle and realizing that this is not, I this is not gonna work. Um, you know, great company, awesome opportunity, um, great people, just not, not not my cup of tea, really. Like I. I didn't like not being able to be fully in control of, you know, the direction my life was, was going to take. Um, so kind of skipping back, back in my capstone class, whenever I was shutting down, uh, kind of the, the car video stuff, one of my friends, uh, told me, he's like, Hey, you got to look into real estate. It's what he wanted to do. It's what he is doing. Um, but he was, uh, he was like, you don't need your, any money. I was like, good, I don't have any. <laughs> uh, but you can you know, go out and raise investor money and you can go flip houses, you can buy apartment buildings. You, I mean, you can start a company with you know, hard work. And so here I am, I've tried a bunch of kind of out there stuff um, with, I mean, wholesaling printers isn't out there, um, but this was like, real estate was like something concrete. It was something that I knew if I just worked hard at, I could go really, really far. Uh, I knew I was a hard worker, um, and I just kind of, you know, got behind this idea that, you know, real estate sounded super interesting, and I was going to go out and flip some houses. So, you know, no joke, I'm, I'm really not exaggerating. There was, you know, I graduated in May of 2017, and, you know, I would wake up with, uh, you know, the, my two friends in our little accountability group. I wake up at 4.30, I'm in the office at 5, I'm reading about real estate, uh, until work starts at eight at lunch, if I didn't have an appointment, I'm doing the same thing. I'm on you know bigger pockets, listening, reading, just obsessed. And then after work, I'm going to all the local real estate meetups in Tulsa. There are some, and if you're looking to get into real estate, you've got to go meet people who are actually doing it. Um, and so my my thought process was, I'm going to learn everything I need to do to start marketing to actually get a contract. And then I'm going to make friends with people who are actually in the space and I'm fresh out of college. So you can kind of, I was kind of selling the, you know, let me, let me, you know, I, at the real estate meetups that is, I'd meet someone, figure out what they're about, take them, invite them to lunch. I would show up, already have researched them, like oh, probably know a little too much about them and drill them with questions. Like I, I'm not sure if this is a good strategy or not, but I had a rule. It's like, I don't want them to finish their lunch. Like if they finish their lunch, then I haven't came, like I haven't come prepared enough. Because uh, my thought process was, if I can earn these people's respect that I'm taking to to lunch, um, whenever I do get my first deal under contract, I don't know how to renovate. 
Um, I think I know my numbers. I mean, based off all the YouTube videos and the books I've read. But, you know, I'm, I, I could probably get this person if they respect me because I came prepared to this lunch and of course I bought their lunch to come walk this house with me and verify my numbers and tell me if this is actually a deal or not. Um, so pretty low risk. I mean, I have the cost of my marketing and then risking my earnest money. Um, but so I, I did that for, uh, from May and to September 1st. And then I finally started to like jump in and actually start sending out my, uh, my first mailers. Um, I got a house under contract, my very first one on September 26, 2017 at 3 a.m. was the only time the guy could meet. Um, that's also my birthday. So I, I was like, this is definitely a God thing. Like I'm meant to, I'm meant to do this. And I was just beyond excited. That ended up being like a, uh, an incredible deal, but it took nine months to close. It was a probate deal. And there was four heirs and they were spread out between you know, Texas and Michigan and they all had to come sign. And uh, that was just a, getting that to close was just like a relentless pursuit of this has to work. Uh, but, you know, skipping back, I get this house under contract and, you know, I'm realizing that, you know, hey, I can actually do this, do this project when it actually closes with, you know, none of my own money. I can go get hard money. The numbers are good enough. I went down to Sharp Mortgage to get a loan on that one. Um, and was able to renovate it when it actually did close. But I got this under contract and I had a desire to go and do something much bigger than single family immediately. Like I was never really interested in single family um, and still not really interested to a degree. We just kind of still do it now because it's easy. Uh, but anyway, so, so back then I, you know, had this home under contract, the numbers were really good. I sat down one day and as scary as it was, you know, everyone has to ask for money at some point. I sat down and I called every single person in my phone contacts and I was asking my parents for a bunch of their friends contacts. Uh, I was asking, you know, dad's friends from high school, you know, dad's friends from college, you know, getting me, trying to meet as many people as I could. I'm literally going down, cold calling everyone in my phone contacts, even if I haven't talked to them in years and saying, Hey, I know we haven't talked in a long time, but I'm getting into real estate. Here's my deal that I just got. Uh, I'm looking for money partners for the next one. Um, you know, I will, I'll mark it, I'll find the deal, and you provide the money to buy it, to renovate it, and then we'll split the profit after, of course, my marketing expense is reimbursed. Uh, so I got a few people interested, um, a few people from the car group that I, you know, used to film were interested. Um, a few friends, dads from high school were interested, uh, just, and by interested, I mean, they were like, yeah, sure. You can call me back, but you know, I'm not guaranteeing anything. I'm not making any promises, like nothing like that. It was just like, yeah, sure. This is out of the blue, but sure. You can call me back if you find something. Um, just, just being nice, honestly. Um, but so then, uh, so that was in September. Um, in November, I met Ryan Mars. We're still business partners. He was the chief information officer of uh, Expo Square in the Tulsa State Fair at the time. Um, the smartest guy I've ever met, still to this day. And when he decides it's gonna do something, like it gets done. That's why we've been business partners for going on three years. Uh, just thinking on a, a level that, you know, I talked to him and I'm like, I feel really stupid now. <laughs> but, you know, that, I think that's good to, you know, to think your partners are smarter than you are. Anyway, so, he, uh, he was getting into real estate. He had done um, a few properties. I'm not sure the exact number they had at that time, uh, but he was kind of new into it. And he had um, kind of done, done some math and realized that um, you know, real estate was a really viable retirement option moving forward. Um, I'm not sure if at the time he wanted to go um, full-time or not, um, but you know, he viewed it as you know, a great way to, to invest on the side. And, you know, of course he was making good money at his day job. But he got this mobile home park under contract. It was a 48 lot mobile home park up in Ponca City. Um, he got it under contract. The earnest money was $10,000. Um, I'm not sure if it was non-refundable or refundable at the beginning, but he had had it under contract for, I believe, about a month and was looking for a, a money partner. Um, you know, he reached out to Brandon Turner and a few other people and 
I'm, I'm not entirely sure why um, no one really stepped up to the plate, um, except the, the, I think the majority of the feedback was this mobile home park in particular is divided. Um, so there is 48 lots that was given to one son when these parents passed away and 48 lots given to another. So there's actually a road that splits two different mobile home parks, which I think a, a few people that he reached out to were probably uncomfortable with, but you know, I didn't really think it was a big deal and, and neither did he. Um, but so I, I met up with Ryan where I, I was actually met him the first time uh, at one of the Tulsa Rhea meetups and he had a duplex that uh, he was, you know, I think about wholesaling and you know, I was, uh, I just moved back from college. I was still living with my parents. I was just looking for a way to get out of the house. So I was like, this could be a good way that I could house hack and, and uh, uh, move out. And he mentions this, you know, mobile home park um, just kind of briefly. And again, if, if you're interested in wholesaling, you shouldn't, if, you, if you're meeting someone for one deal, you should never mention another deal because you immediately just lose their interest and you should only talk about one thing. But he mentioned this 48 lot mobile home park and immediately the duplex was out of my mind like I oh, didn't care anymore. I was just interested in what's going on with this mobile home park. Over the next week, I you know, got him to send me the numbers, kind of review the deal. And I was, I mean, I was, I was all about it. You know, I, uh, the numbers worked. Um, I thought it was a great opportunity. I liked the area. I drove up there and checked it out and I convinced Ryan over the next week to say, Hey, I'll put up my half of the earnest money and let's go in and, you know, be 50, 50 partners on, on this thing. Um, I convinced him that I could raise the money, uh, that I you know knew people who were looking for something like this, which, you know, I, I, I did have people that were vaguely interested, but again, like looking for a mobile home park investment, like absolutely not. Um, I just kind of took a bet on myself and I told Ryan I thought I could do it and he trusted me enough to, to go out and try. Um, so I, at that point, you know, it's been under contract um, whenever we officially decided to partner up on it for like a month and a half, I believe. And the seller was, you know, not really liking the lack of progress. So of course the earnest money became non-refundable. Um, I didn't have any money. I just spent all my money marketing to get this one single family house under contract. So I ended up selling my car. Um, I just priced it really low, got a buyer within the first week and sold it to put up, you know, my $5,000 of, of earnest money and start driving my parents little work truck around. My parents, I don't deserve like they, they, uh, their support throughout this entire process has just been like exponential and, uh, I love them so much. But anyway, so they let me uh, drive my, their little work truck around while I, I sold my car. I think they probably thought I was crazy. Um, but so I took that, you know, I took that bet, sold the car, and, you know, kind of like Ryan at the time, he got it under contract, he put up money, he kind of put himself, you know, in a corner and just said, I, I believe I can figure this out. Like, I'm smart enough that I'm going to take a bet on myself, even if it is a few thousand dollar dollar bet. Um, so I just, you know, sat down and called everyone I knew. Um, again, even the people that said, I'm not interested, you know, please don't call me again. We haven't talked in three years or we haven't talked since your eighth grade baseball team. I still called them. I called every single person in my phone. Uh, some people I called more than once, um, even after they told me not to call again. Because I just, uh, like failure was, was not an option. Again, I was at this HVAC company, been there for a few months. And I believe there's like a few defining moments in everybody's life. And I believe that this was one of mine. And again, that failure wasn't, wasn't an option. Like, I, I knew that I could sell somebody on this. Um, somebody who had, it was probably gonna take someone who knew me um, for a few years. It was going to take someone who knew my work ethic, somebody who knew that if this didn't go right, um, I was going to find some way to, to pay them back. Um, so I ended up um, um, kind of crossing paths with uh, our first investor. Um, it was one guy. Um, he he was just taken back by the, the mobile home park. Uh, kind of shocked. Like, again, we've only talked about single family houses at this point. Um, and... It, I mean, it was, wasn't easy, um, but it came down to, you know, I knew him previously. He trusted me. He knew my work ethic. He knew me as, um, 
the person that was always trying to start these crazy ideas and always interested in business, which I think is a large portion why he trusted uh, us enough to eventually lend us the money. Um, but the, the money, uh, so you know, over the next month we kind of came to an agreement. Uh, he drove up there and <laughs> said, hey, this thing's a piece of junk. Um, and I was like, you know, hey, that's, that's the opportunity here. Like this thing needs a lot of work and Ryan and I, we're gonna drive up there if, you know, even if it takes driving up after work on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, like we're gonna do it. We're gonna sleep in a mobile home on the weekends. We're gonna repair everything ourselves. Like we are gonna make this work even if it doesn't. Which was kind of the, the sales pitch. But so he agreed to lend us the money, uh, not an equity investment, uh, just hard money. Um, you know, personally guaranteed, promissory note, um, second position secured uh, behind the, the uh, first Oklahoma bank, which provided the first loan. Um, the interest rate um, was 18% on this, this, uh, this loan he provided. Um, you know, 18% is really high, but you know, we kind of put it into the numbers. It's still, the deal still worked. Um, and it was still win-win at the end of the day. Like you have us who needed the money. Um, now 18% is a high interest rate, but the numbers still worked. And uh, we both were confident that we could make it work, even if you know, even if it didn't, or even if we've discovered something that we didn't know, we were gonna go up there every day and make like make this happen. And then it was a win for him. You know, he's getting a premium interest rate, and he's the interest rate is probably in line with you know the investments of mobile home park, which is you know, three years ago. Now they're super hot, but back then they were just, people are just starting to talk about them as a good investment strategy. Uh, and he's also taking a bet on two people who are extremely new in real estate, like brand new in, in real estate. Uh, but he knew my, he knew my background and he, you know, met Ryan, you know, Ryan's a CIO, uh, CIO of Expo Square in Tulsa State Fair. And, um, it was a win-win. Um, I, we didn't care about it at the interest rate. We saw it as a win-win and, um, not to say I wasn't nervous. I was definitely nervous. I think we both were. But there was a pivotal moment where we were sitting down, you know, deciding like, okay, are we going to go through with this? And kind of the the um, agreement between us is we have to. We both felt that we were capable of more than we were currently doing, and this is this is our way to you know get on the fast track. Um, essentially, now it's a it's a it's a, a big bet. Um, it's you know borrowing um, over a hundred thousand um, dollars at a high interest rate, and if this doesn't go right. You know, we are, again, driving up there every day of the week and sleeping in a mobile home on the weekend and repairing ourselves. But we're probably working in our day jobs to pay a large portion of this back over the next 10, 15 years. And that was just kind of the, the reality that, um, that was just the reality. But again, it, it had to work. Um, so we, we borrowed the money, I'm signing the promissory note, I'm literally shaking as I'm, I'm signing it, but again, I have to do it. I know I'm capable of more than, than what I was doing. Um, we bought the, the property on February 8th, 2018. Um, Ryan and I went up there, took vacation days, four days to go up there. We slept in a mobile home on the floor that needed to be renovated and renovated ourselves. Uh, we started going up there a few times a week and on the weekends again, we are sleeping in a mobile home, um, heading up Friday, <laughs> staying until Sunday night, working, walking around, cleaning up the park, just doing whatever needed to be done. And uh, the, the park when we bought it had nine vacant park owned homes. And so we started going through one by one and renovating them. And as we'd get one leased, um, we'd kind of cycle through and eventually started hiring people to, to help us to kind of cycle through the, through the nine and get them all occupied. Uh, three months later, um, we got uh, the park reappraised. It appraised for honestly a few hundred thousand more than we bought it for. Uh, we paid the uh, ref cash out refinance, paid the um, investor off, um, and we were, I mean, not not set by any means, but we we had our start. We ended up buying us um, in 2018. We bought another mobile home park um, like a month after that refinance happened. 
uh, up in Missouri, four hours away, and did the same thing. So on, on Saturday, we're traveling to Ponca City. On Sunday, we're traveling up to Missouri. Um, and we did that for months, just months. And then we, we started flipping the sixplex that was in Tulsa. And so we're working every day after work on the sixplex. And then, of course, on the weekends, we're gone. Um, 2018 was just a whirlwind. Um, of course, bought the single family house that I contracted back in September still hadn't closed. So the mobile home park was the first thing I actually ever bought. Um, and by the second mobile home park, we had a, we'd gotten a third under contract. Uh, we had a fourplex and these eight other homes under contract as well. And December 7th, 2018, I, you know, quit my job and went, uh, went full time. So less than a year later after buying my, my first property, uh, we ended up closing um, early 2019 on two oil leases, which were just, uh, that's that's a story for another day. But two oil leases, another mobile home park, um, bought a few more houses, uh, ended up partnering up with Sam Singraff about midway through the year. And let's fast forward. Uh, now we've got you know an office downtown, nine employees. Um, we sold one of our mobile home parks. We still have three. Uh, start buying a lot of houses and are recently getting into apartment buildings. Um, so kind of kind of a whirlwind of the last uh, last three years, uh, but really really rewarding. Um, there's definitely a few just pivotal moments um, that I look back on, and um, I'm just super thankful for for everything that that's happened. The team that I have, I couldn't have done any of this without Ryan Mars or Sam Singraff. Um, and I think at the end of the day, just came down to believing that I was capable of doing more than I currently was and willing to do anything to get there. Um, even if that meant sleeping on the floor of a very dirty mobile home with uh, uh, not much heat in the, the dead of winter. Uh, but so that that's my story. Um, you know, now we've got uh, just past um, 20 million under management. We've done uh, mobile home parks, we've done RV parks, we've done apartment buildings, and we've done you know over 150 houses in the, the Tulsa area. Um, we're growing really fast. I'd love to help anybody else get into real estate who's interested. We're always looking for new investors. Um, I'm, just, I'm just extremely thankful. I feel really blessed to be in the position that I am to, to be my own boss and kind of, um, kind of guide. Um, the direction that we're going alongside Ryan and Sam. I'm extremely thankful for the employees that we have now. They're uh, like family. They're incredibly hard workers and uh, I, I, want, I, I want them to, to succeed uh, and um, for us to continue to grow. Um, you know, I'm really goal oriented. My goal is by the time I turn 30, I wanna have 100 million under management I think we're on pace to meet that goal, but it's gonna take a lot of hard work. It's gonna take starting to buy bigger properties um, and just not letting off the, letting off the gas. We are uh, you know, still this day reinvesting a ton into the company to be able to grow it faster. Um, and uh, yeah, just really excited for the, the future. So if anybody's interested in getting into real estate investing, um, you know, I would say you need to read, you need to put in the legwork, no one's gonna do the work for you. Um, but you've also gotta be going to every single real estate meetup there is and trying to meet people um, who are actively flipping, um, who are maybe you know starting to exit or starting to slow down, because they're a lot more likely to take the time to actually sit down with you, show you what they have done, or double check your numbers or something like that. Uh, it, and another thing is if you do find a deal, even if you can't find someone like that, if you do find a deal, you know, net, please never pay for a guru. There's tons of people in the Tulsa market or any market who are willing to help someone who's getting involved as long as they can see that you're actually doing your research, you're actually, uh, you know, trying to, trying to move forward and then make stuff happen on your own. And, you know, if you find a good deal, there'll be someone out there who's willing to take it and partner with you. Uh, to get you started and who will teach you everything along the way for that first deal. Uh, just don't expect anyone to ever do it for you. And at some point, you know, you're going to have to take a risk. And that risk might be an all-in bet. 
um, kind of like mine was. It might be as simple as, you know, working three months, saving um, every penny and spending that all on a round of marketing or pulling a list or cold calling or sending mailers or, you know, whatever you decide to do. But there is going to be some risk involved with getting into to real estate. And it is 100% true. If you're not consistently marketing, you're never going to find anything. Um, if you're not consistently out meeting people and um, kind of setting reputation to be a closer, someone that people want to do business with, people are never going to send you deals. Like you've got to be out there. And for me, that's one of my biggest struggles because I'm such a, like a clean freak, honestly. Like I have to have everything like just so. I have to have my email inbox like completely filtered through. And you can't, you can't operate like that. Like you've got to, you've got to be focused on growth and organize later like meet as many people as you can during the day be networking as much as possible be buying as many people's lunch as you possibly can um and uh i, I really think that's the, the way forward for for getting started so again if you're interested in real estate investing um again we're always raising money it's part of the five hundred thousand dollar challenge right now if you have any questions um or want me to look over your numbers for a deal you just contracted i'm more than happy to do that or if I can provide value to you in any other way, please reach out. I'd uh, love to connect, love to help, love to grab a coffee. Um, so yeah, but yeah, so that's uh, that's my story, um, and I will probably have another video out tomorrow. Thank you, thank you everyone who who listened. Bye.